This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here to talk indie wrestling with indie wrestlers, people around indie wrestling. Myself, a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area with IndieWrestling.us, working with the IWC, RWA, and a few other projects here and there. Uh, we got a great conversation coming up, coming up for you tonight. But in the meantime, please subscribe to the show on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube pages. And check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including the Indie Mayhem Show and everything else that we're doing around pro wrestling and of course joining here join us here uh, on the facebook live uh wrestling mayhem show again on the facebook and live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com check out the events and see what's coming up we got a lot of bookings through most of september at this point and a lot of random ones like the one we're filming tonight you never know when we're going to pop up with an interview uh throughout the week so uh keep an eye on that so you guys can be a part of it too and of course drop us a line at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412-206-WMS0 and of course please support us on the patreon because we literally need to keep the lights on here and we do appreciate everybody that does support this show or share the show or whatever you do to support it and get some other people into the mayhem nation uh we got a very special guest this is um we, we call this um part two of an inevitable three of our uh canada series here on the indie mayhem show rc dupree is joining us here in the studio He's blowing a kiss for you guys on audio. <laughs> How you doing today? Fantastic, Sorg. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. I, I don't know if it's the lights in here, but he's got sunglasses on. I, I want to mind you, it is 10 p.m. Eastern time, and the sun is not glaring. Although you're set for the earlier shows where we're happy, having a problem with the sun. Yes, I keep it eccentric. Yes, ex- exactly. So we're going to get into a little bit of uh, R.C. Dupree and, and, and everything going on with the IWC and everything. Um, but uh, in the meantime, a little bit of break the ice question. What's your first uh, me- memory of pro wrestling? Um, so before I get to that, I, I just want to let you know that for inviting me on the show, oh, I have oh, yes. a gift for you. Okay. It is a Team Storm 8x10 just for you, Sorg. Nice. It's it's signed and everything. Yes. Thank you so and much. And whenever you have uh, Jackson Argus back on, he can sign it. And uh, the vet, Jack Pollock. There right you go. There, there you, you go. You. That's, 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 that's just um, um, guaranteed that there will be appearing slash reappearing on the show now. So yes. I'm I, a forward thinker. There you go. There you go. That's going, that's going on the back right behind you <laughs> with the other pictures easily. So thank you very much for that. So, so tell me, what is your first memory of pro wrestling? So my first memory of pro wrestling. Uh, so you know how uh, people go back and they remember their first memory and it's whatever. Uh, my first memory is actually pro wrestling. Uh, my brother had a, when he was a wrestling fan, he had a Hulk Hogan VHS tape that I still kept to this day. And uh, I remember the first match I ever saw was Hulk Hogan versus King Haku. And that was my uh, first experience in, in watching wrestling. Literally, since since I can remember, I've been a wrestling fan. That's awesome. What, what tape is it? Again? It's uh, Real American. It came out in 92. Real American? Yes. <laughs> Wait, was it just like a collection of matches uh, or yeah, something? Yeah, it was, it was uh, Hulk Hogan versus King Haku, Teddy Biasi, and I cannot remember the other two. Maybe Andre the Giant. Some of those amazing like Coliseum home videos. Yeah, yeah. It was, ones. Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, Saturday night's main event. He fought Haku, but it was on the VHS tape. Funny story about that, though. So uh, I'm sure I saw other matches in between, but the, the only three matches that I remember seeing as a child was uh, Hulk Hogan versus King Haku, Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy, and then Hulk Hogan versus King Harley Race. So as a child getting into wrestling, I'm just thinking like, oh, he's, he's fighting another king. Like, this is crazy. So I just thought kings from all over the world came to fight Hulk Hogan. As you would do, right? As you would do. So, Absolutely. Um, no, 
I had some interesting misconceptions about Hulk Hogan growing up too. Like he was just always the champ, which I'm sure is what people thought in like the 60s and 70s of Bruno San Martino because he literally was always the champ. So, you know, it's interesting how that that comes up. So how did you go from that? You know, obviously, you know, um, a very real American. Um, Wait, wait, wait. So was this like well after 1992 that you're watching this tape? Uh, This might have been 93. Like, so I was born in February of 91. So whenever like my first memory could come up, literally, so it's very literally, yeah. wow, that's amazing, and yeah. just hooked ever since. Um, at what point, or does this also at two years old that it, you thought about like the the prospect of actually getting in the ring was a realistic thing? Uh, I would say since I was a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, my so my brother used to be a big wrestling fan, and then my grandfather got me into pro wrestling. And it was just one of those, like, I want to do this when I grow up. And I never, ever wanted to do anything else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, of course, you know, you have a lot of naysayers. A lot of wrestlers have the same story of having doubters. Mm -hmm. And uh, mine's no different. I had a lot of people doubting what I would do. But, you know, I'm here now. So Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you you went from that. And obviously, part of the, as... We all know if we, if we if you follow along with IWC and you, what you guys are doing there with Team Storm, uh, part of the Lance Storm uh, Training Academy. Was that a first stop for you, or did you have some training before going up there? Uh, that was a so. This is going to be a bit of a story, but it's that's it's fine. it's uh, that's what we're here for. Okay, so uh, besides my girlfriend, besides Team Storm, I don't really know how many people know this story. Uh, so I wanted to go to Storm's Academy back in 2010, but it was just way too expensive. I was straight out of high school, and that was my go-to because Owen Hart's my favorite wrestler of all time. I'm obsessed with the Calgary, uh, you know, legacy of wrestling. So I wanted I wanted to train there, but I just thought, oh, it's going to be too expensive, and that's mm-hmm. where I ended it there. So uh, go to Night of the Superstars three, uh, the one with Bret Hart. Uh, I think it was Night of Superstars 3. I saw, uh, you know, I, I started going to IWC shows. I've, I've been a fan of IWCs from like Bubble the Bulldog to to uh, Chuck Roberts to, uh, oh, geez, what's his name? Uh, right before Norm Connors. Norm Connors, mm-hmm. yes, sorry. Um, so I've, I've known about IWC for a long time. So I saw this and I was like, oh, I, I want to go to IWC. So after Night of the Superstars 3, uh, time came and went. And then January of 2014, I saw Chuck Roberts. So I went up to Chuck Roberts and I told him, uh, you know, I would like to train for you. And Chuck Roberts, uh, the thing is, I, I don't hold any ill will towards him. Like, you know, I'm sure he gets a lot of people that want to become a pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. So he kind of looked me up and down and, and said, uh, have you ever thought about being a referee instead? <laughs> and that right there just Ouch. killed me, man. Ouch. Killed me. So Could you imagine if somebody said that to like DJ Z? Oh, absolutely. You know, as a scrawny 16 year old kid that he was, you know, so. Yeah. So he said that. So, uh, here's where the eccentric artist side of me comes in. Not even 30 seconds after he said that I said, Hey, can I get a picture with you? Uh, to him, it's just probably like, Oh, it's an IWC fan getting a picture with me. But to Mm -hmm. me, I said, you know what? I'm going to chase my dream of wrestling and I'm going to not only wrestle for one of your shows, but I'm going to main event one of your shows. So for the next year and a half, uh, I decided, you know, uh, I am going to go to Lance's Academy. Why not? It's, it's too expensive. Well, guess what? I'll just work really, really hard and save up my money. So that's exactly what I did. And then January of 2016, I went to Lance's Academy and worked my butt off for three months straight. And then, uh, once I graduated, I, Eventually worked myself in uh, IWC and uh, to this date have main event at three IWC shows. Jeez. That's amazing. I mean, there's a great picture. I, I shared this on, on Wrestling Mayhem Show. You found yourself in the crowd uh, yes. behind, of all people, Chris LaRusso yes. and Tatanka. This was last year's. Yes. Uh, this was the 2016 Night of the Superstars, which is usually in April of mm-hmm. Amiable PA. And then uh, what did you do this year when you main evented? uh in in a what was it a handicap match that involved ryback yeah that was uh wrestling is very funny and very uh surreal um it it was it was 
it was very mind blowing to be in the whole situation. Cause not only, I, I didn't think I was going to, uh, wrestle for none of the superstars that quickly, let alone mm-hmm. main event it and even wrestle for IWC. It's usually a pretty full <laughs> night. Not everybody gets on the card. You got to yeah, make room sure. for, for Ryback and Tatanka and, and Roddy Piper and things like that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it was definitely a mind blowing experience. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, I just surreal is is lack of a better term. That's the best way I could say it. It's just surreal. And and, think- and, and then facing Ryback is just what? <laughs> like <laughs> the, the, the guy that got told he was a referee got to face Ryback. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and well, I don't think you mentioned you, you you said in the post that you were pointing at the place where you sat. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I I go to none of these superstars every year. Well, I would with uh two 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 buddies of mine we would always meet every single year for another mm-hmm. superstars well they went there this year so i like pointed straight at them to the exact spot where we always sit every year nice since night of the superstars too we've been going every single year so that was that was a very cool cool moment that warmed my heart mm-hmm. whenever i got to do that that's awesome so tell me a little bit about uh, getting in the the um the experience at uh lance storm's training academy we, we talked to, of course jackson argos uh, about his experience there, and and it seemed pretty interesting. And then and it sounded like Lance had a pretty interesting opinion of him. Uh, go back to that episode to check that conversation out. But what was your experience with the uh, team? The I'm, not Team Storm, Storm <laughs> Academy. I'm sorry, I, I've been hearing it. For, you know, I've been, I've been. I think I said the other thing, like the Storm or Team Canada or something like that, for like like three months or something like that. And now I'm going the other way. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, it was, first off, it was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. Uh, people would say, uh, some people in the wrestling business even say, Oh, you only trained for three months, but it's like, no, 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 no. It, it's not like, you know, you train for a year, but you go to training once a week and then you mm-hmm. do your job and you know, you have your life. Literally my life for three months straight was the storm wrestling Academy. Uh, I would say probably six days a week we either did training or we would go to shows. And the thing with Calgary, which I I haven't seen this elsewhere, they have shows on like Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. So we would wake up early. We would go running for a little bit and then we would go training, get home around four, go to the gym, go to a show. So literally every single day was just wrestling. Oh, and gym time as well. But not having a job up there, you just devoted your life to wrestling. And it's one of those things of, uh, could I do it right now? I don't know. I don't know if I have the mentality to do it right. Like, I, I don't know how I got through it the first time, maybe just cause I wanted it that bad. But, mm-hmm. uh, Lance, Lance was great. He, me and Argos have similar personalities. We're extremely different, but similar in the point of, I was the class clown at storm wrestling Academy. And then once I left, Lance was probably like, Oh, thank goodness. He's gone. Literally the very next class. He had Jackson Argos. <laughs> So, so when Jackson Argus told him that him and I were tag teaming, Lance was like, of course, like, why wouldn't you, you know? So that's amazing. And, and so you go, you go from that and then you get uh, involved with IWC again. Yes. Right. Uh, talk a little bit about that, getting back into that and, and kind of that experience. So I had my eye on IWC forever. Mm-hmm. That, that was the company that I wanted to work for. And coming back, I saw that there was a Billy Gunn seminar. I uh, I think it was Reloaded 2.0 was the show. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go and maybe just meet people, just network. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went to the seminar and I met, I met like, you know, Chris LaRusso's and, uh, and Bulk Nasty and stuff like that. And then I, Justin Plummer invited me backstage uh, that night of the show. And there I met Brian Bowers who is a former storm guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I always thought it would be interesting while I was training. Cause it's so hard to do something different in wrestling, especially in 2017. So I thought there's never been a faction of storm guys. Like, if anything, it's like, oh, you're a storm guy, you're a storm guy. Let's have you guys face each other. And and, and the Storm Academy has been going for a long time yeah. too, like what ten years or something, yeah. right? Since uh, 05, I believe. 05. So yeah. so there are a lot of storm guys out there. Yes, yes. And there's never been a faction of of storm guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I thought that would be cool. And then uh, we I started talking to Brian Bowers, and then he started kicking around the idea 
of hey what if you know we did something with like storm guys and and in my head i'm just thinking oh, i've been thinking this since i was training like this is this is amazing and then uh eventually one thing led to another and team storm happened Right. And the day that we debuted with Brian Bowers is the day I met Jackson Argos. Yeah. Wow. Because, I mean, it was definitely one of those, like, okay, who are these trainee guys that kind of got thrown out, with, mm-hmm. you know, as his kind of flunkies on this kind of thing, right? And then it developed into, well, it, well Bowers got out, Yeah, uh, I guess we can say. And, uh, and, and you know, you guys kind of went off on your own. Yeah. 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 Um, while while I was training in Calgary too, uh, so I knew about Jack Pollock and Brian Bowers as Storm guys, mm-hmm. and I I would talk to Lance about uh, Jack Pollock and Brian Bowers, and then we would have camp matches. And one of the things that I did in my practice camp matches was a spot that Jack Pollock did when he spine busted uh, uh, Brian Bowers at a PWX show, then turned it right into the half crab. And I copied that just because I was a fan of Jack Pollock, so. It's it's literally mind blowing the year that I've had in wrestling, being able to do the things that I've done, and it's yeah, I, it's just very surreal. And then Jack Pollock eventually joining Team Storm just blew my mind because I, I love Brian Bowers, but mm-hmm. Jack Pollock, I was a fan of. You know, mm-hmm. like I was a huge fan of Jack Pollock. So. He's, yeah, he's been running running around the the area for a while doing yeah. some great stuff. Um, and great to see him popping up in IWC too. But one thing I don't think I asked asked Jackson this is: it, does the Team Storm have the like like the the thumbs up of Lance Storm? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like you, okay. Before we we decided on the name Team Storm, we asked Lance about it, and and he gave us his blessing on it. And every now and again, like I'll exchange text messages with him and and just to see how we're doing and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool to look at your phone and be like, Oh, it's Lance storm. Like another mind blown. I'm a person that moment. texts with Lance storm. That yeah, kind of thing, right. right. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so you're, uh, what about, uh, I'm trying to remember the time frame here. You're about a year since no, no you're longer. You're, you've been around longer than, than Jackson, right? Yeah. So, so I started, my first match was in May. But between May and the time Team Storm started in September, right, I'd only had two matches, so I count me and Argos kind of on the same wavelength, right. So, so let's say roughly over a year. Yeah, yeah, a little. You've over been a year. in, in sure. the industry, um, having matches out there doing your thing. Yeah. Um, what's really you know obviously you've had some really great moments we've already talked about, but as far as getting out there in front of people doing your thing, what's kind of the thing that really surprises you getting out there so far? Uh, you, you mean like with everything that we've done so far? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, Hmm. Uh, I keep going back to the word surreal, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, I, a lot of things that we've been able to do, it's, there's no time to prepare for it. I mean, wrestling's a lot of that too. You know, you don't, you don't have time to prepare. It's just, Oh, here, let's throw this at you, throw this at you. And, uh, sometimes I feel like, I got into wrestling at 24. I'm now 26. So sometimes I feel like, you know, hearing, hearing like the Tyler Bates that are 19 and stuff like that. I'm like, ah, well maybe I got in a little too late, but I think the rookie year that I've had has made up for lost times. It sounds like, you know, I, the, the, the word when you're describing, uh, the storm Academy is crash course. Yeah. Right. Um, or compressed, I guess. And it sounds like your career has done the same thing. Yes. In a sense. So, um, do you think that's mostly from the pedigree? Like, do you think if you went through normal wrestling school, you know, at a local promotion, you know, not calling anybody out or anything, but, uh, you know, that you would be as prepared for, for this kind of thing? Um, I don't think so. I, Lance's Academy is a whole different monster. No Mm. offense to these other, uh, training, training promotion, uh, companies, uh, like IWC school, for instance, it's, mm-hmm. it's a great school. Like I wanted to go to IWC school. Produces some great talent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even the crop they have now with like the Billy Ruxpins and the, you know, the Katie Arquettes, the Jinx, Calvin mm-hmm. Couture's, these are all great kids. But Lance's school is just, you know, I, I lived with 12 people from all over the world mm-hmm. for three months straight and not all, all of us made it out. You know, a lot of people quit and it, it just, it, it's a, it's a test to see how much you really want it. 
Mm. Because some people say, oh, well, you know, I, I got into wrestling because I kind of wanted to get into wrestling. With Lance's school, it's like you don't, you don't like since graduating Lance's school, I don't need to be successful. I have to be successful in Lance's school. So, all right. Uh, so, so uh, of that first, you know, rookie year ish thing, you're, you're coming up as of this recording. And I think the official release of this is probably going to be after, but you are also coming up as we were just talking with Kitty Arquette in here uh, about a, a war games cage match. Yes. Uh, which uh, have you won? Have you had a chance to do a cage match and of, of all things, a war games thing, which has to add a lot of complication to things. Uh, yeah, it's, very exciting and uh, cringeworthy at the same time. It's going to be Jack Pollock's first cage match. Really? Which blows my mind because He's I would not have think that. Yeah, 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 I would not have thought that. I was actually hanging out with Jack Pollock the other day, and and uh, I was like, oh, how many cage matches have you had? And he said, oh, this is my first one. I was like, oh, hey, me too. And then he just kind of gave me that look like, you know, you don't know how like like it's your first year, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like I've had a ladder match, a cage match. We just had a flag match. That's right. Yeah. Like, which the same weekend the WWE was having their version of a flag match. Yes. So yes. it was kind of an interesting thing to compare for yes. us. Uh, by the way, announced first for IWC with these guys. So. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. But, um, <laughs> which, and of course they didn't get the sizing right of the flags. <laughs> yep. The American flag was bigger than ours. Yes. So. Yeah. Story. Yeah. That. Um, but but how do you prepare for something like that uh, with the cage match, the War Games cage match? Uh, I don't really know if you. I I guess like I, I've been watching a lot of War Games matches, mm-hmm. whether it be for IWC or or just you know on the on the network. I, I don't I don't really know how you prepare for a cage match because it's gonna it's gonna hurt no matter what. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh I don't know. I, I just. As it comes, I guess. Okay, you've been watching. I'm going to throw a question at you here. Um, so, when it comes to war games matches, and and you know, there's the staples for these, like the Dusty Rose, the Road Warriors, the yeah. Stings, uh, uh, Harley Race, I guess, right? Uh, uh, who do you see your position as of of those staples in the war games? And not even the ones I mentioned. Anybody else you can think of? Uh, when you go in there, are you the Arn Anderson? Are you the the Hawk? Uh, hmm. you know, who, who do you think you, you would kind of have that position? Man, that's a good question. And, and who do you think the rest of your team would be in that position? Um, hmm. and of course we're talking about Jack Pollock and Jackson Argos team storm. Yeah. Um, I, I get like, if we were going horsemen, I guess it would be, uh, Pollock as the flair. Uh, and then probably me and Argos as the Arn and Tully. I don't know uh, who would be who in that, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I guess if we were going horsemen, um, hmm, yeah, yeah. That's all right. All right, good. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't a more uh, in depth <laughs> answer. It was an off the cuff, so there's that. Um, we're having some, we're having a lot of fun in the chat room. Some guys are hanging out there. Some uh, past and future guests are actually hanging out in there. Um, there is a call for uh, Drop Jackson Argos and uh, uh, team up with the Reaper. Oh, Matt Connor that we just talked to here on the show recently. I'm a big fan of Matt Connor. <laughs> that would be the eccentric artist and the Reaper could be an interesting team up. The eccentric Reapers. The eccentric Reapers. There you go. Yes. It's more than just because we had a conversation about just spooky, uh, spooky guys getting teamed up all the time. Oh, like yeah. Him and Gory yeah. him and whoever, whoever has face paint, right? And uh, that could be something a little different. So. Um, uh, so what's up, Billy and everybody else, uh, joining us in there. Um, what's that? You don't keep an eye on the Twitter feed either. Um, Plato Merrimack is actually, I, I tweeted out that Lance Storms Academy is different than other training schools. It's a test to see if you really want it based yeah, on what you were talking sure. about. And, uh, Plato responded back, SWA 2009 alumnus, hashtag Calgary pride. Yes. You guys are everywhere. Shout out to Plato <laughs> Merrimack. Yes. There you go. I didn't realize he was that deep in the game. Yeah, we call Plato Mirmac the godfather of oh, really? <laughs> in the IWC world. Wow. Wow. Uh, Duke Davis does not like the idea, by the way. He hates uh, it. No, he hates it. He hates it. 
Um, but, and if you guys, uh, last chance, uh, drop any questions you want us to uh, uh, put in here before the uh, end of the show in the chat room for you guys joining us live. Um, so what are you watching these days? You know, other than the war games, uh, what's got to your attention? Any wrestlers, promotions that um, you're kind of keeping an eye on these days? Uh, before I answer that, uh, talking about the stables made me think of this. Uh, so me and me and Argus have a running thing with Pollock because me and Argus joke around a lot and Pollock mm-hmm. is kind of the straight laced. Uh, we joke around that he's the Kurt Angle and, and me and Argus are the Edge and Christian <laughs> faction, you know, because <laughs> he's just like, guys, come on. Yeah, but, I, I can see that. <laughs> so uh, what I'm watching these days, uh, just if I'm having a match with someone, I, I watch to see, you know, what they do, how, how, uh, how I can counter what they do. Uh, things like that. I'm a big fan of uh, past guests of your show. I watch a lot of that. Uh, pretty much anyone I'm following on face on uh, Instagram or Twitter, I'm a big fan of. Like I, I love watching uh, the gavel, David Lawless, mm-hmm. and and the Matt Connards, and and of course Jack Pollock's, Chris Larusso's. Uh, even like it would be asinine for me to say uh, I don't watch Andrew Palace. Uh, I may not like Andrew Palace, but I do watch Andrew Palace. Uh, I've been watching Andrew Powers actually before I got into wrestling. So that's awesome. And again, your opponent up on, uh, at this moment uh, coming up war games. We do have one from Billy Johnson. Who is your dream match against? Man. Uh, so for year alive, two, alive for year, for year two, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For year two, yeah, right. Um, uh, so my favorite wrestler of all time is Owen Hart. All time is Owen Hart. I actually met Owen Hart eight days before he passed away. Oh, geez. Yes. I told him I was going to be a wrestler. And uh, he told me to go for it. He also told me that he was not the Blue Blazer because I called him out for it. He said, I'm not here you talking about. So that's a cool memory. But uh, uh, Owen Hart, um, if I could have a match with anyone currently, man. Uh, so this is an odd one, but me and Argus also have a running gag on this. I mean, I love Buff Bagwell. So I think, and especially because he's retiring this year, at the end of this year, I believe. I would love to wrestle Buff Bagwell because he's the stuff and the girls just can't get enough. And he can drop a Canadian Destroyer. So Oh, man, you know, that's right. Yes. It's perfect. Man, Buff is such the stuff. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what's the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling so far for you? Hmm. I would say the best is being under the learning tree of a Jack Pollock and a Chris LaRusso and just having the craziness that has happened in the past year. Mm-hmm. Like life, life has been going so fast and, and Jackson Argus is right there with me on this, on this rookie year ride. It, it's been going so fast. So I would say the best thing is just how crazy and unpredictable wrestling is. And I would say the worst thing is probably how crazy and unpredictable wrestling is. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> There's some great comments. Duke saying, uh, how do you even move on after that? He met Owen Hart. Best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> there you yes. go. And yeah, and he's going to be on in a couple weeks. So we'll, 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 we'll see, see his stories in comparison, right? So um, what's that? I did not see uh, Dream Match. I got the Dream Match. I didn't get that. So uh, with that, where can people, well, one, where are, you know, obviously International Wrestling Cartel, but generally what other places are you um, working that people can check you out in your, in their area? So another cool thing with this whole first year of wrestling is I've been able to work at a lot of promotions that I've been a fan of. Like we've, we've wrestled for Mega. We wrestled, I've wrestled for Black Diamond. I've wrestled for uh, the Monster Factory. Uh, We've done stuff with Northeast Wrestling. Uh, Pretty soon, depending on, uh, I think this is airing after, but we're going to be wrestling for big time wrestling. And then, the ballpark show coming up yes. this Friday with Sting. Yes. And then IWC wrestling. So pretty much all over. Any, anywhere I can go, that's where, where you will see the eccentric artist. Ooh. Amazing. Where can people find you online? I'm on Instagram as RC Dupree. I am on... Uh, Facebook is RC Dupree and I am on Twitter as the RC Dupree because someone stole RC Dupree oh, and did not do anything with their Twitter. So shame on that's them. the worst. Yes. When they, it's just sitting there and it's an egg. Um, we didn't touch on and I just thought about because everybody talks about your promos. Oh, okay. and I know I know I recently watched one where it was an interesting mashup between you and Jackson 
cutting your respective parts of promos. And yours is very interesting and psychedelic and things like that. Um, can you talk a little bit about that style? That Absolutely. You go for that? I'm actually really happy you brought that up, Sword, because on the ride home, I would have been kicking myself for not bringing this up about the promos. Uh, so I just, I've always been a big, I've always been a student of the game. I've, I've always watched guys like Gina Hernandez and, and, you know, the Chris Adams and, and even like more current, like the Brian Pillman's and Owen Hart's and, and just, I think that's a thing with wrestling. If you get into wrestling, you need to, you need to really be a fan of wrestling and do your research. Like, uh, that's, that's my, my promos are just based off of watching a lot of wrestling stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I just want to do something different because I, I don't like the promos, not calling anyone out, but I don't like the promos where, you know, it's like tough guy, but like I can see like your sink and like your light in the background. Like I don't, I don't buy that. And also I didn't, I, I'm not a fan of when people share that the show's coming out. Like, I mean, I'm guilty of it too, but I also put out a promo, but like if someone shares something and just says like, you know, I, I'm going to beat so-and-so at this date. I've never, as a fan, I've never been, I've never read a, a thing that someone shared and said, you know what? I want to go to the show just because of reading that. I like to watch promos and I like to see build up to the show. Uh, like the IWC thing that uh, they just put out with the war games build up. If I'm a fan and I see that it, it would intrigue me to want to go, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, the promos, it's just doing something different. Uh, the, the eccentric artist, there's no character between the eccentric artist and RC Dupree, RC Dupree and the eccentric artist. It's literally who I am. I hung out with uh, three of my friends from out of state a couple days ago, and they said, it's, it's funny that you're just you in wrestling. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much who I am. But yeah, the, the promos are just doing something different out of left field that you don't see everyone else doing. I don't like being cookie cutter. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, your, your, your partner, Jackson Argos, has uh, popped in the chat here late in the Ooh. show. You have any words for him out there? I love you, Jackson Argos. Hey, uh, maybe if I do fight Buff Bagwell, you can fight Glacier. Because that's his uh, dream opponent. This sounds like this is happening in AIW either way. Because yes. just like, uh, they're <laughs> practically regulars up there, I think. Yeah, that's so, true. Because that's the kind of promotion they run. And it's amazing. So um, thank you so much, RC Dupree, joining us here in studio. Thank you for the wonderful gift as well. Uh, so check them out. And of course, uh, whenever you're checking this out, check out Cage Fury and see how that War, Games get, uh, that War Games match went for him in the Steel Cage. Just over a year into the game, he's doing he's doing a Steel Cage match. Although although Katie Arquette got you beat by like six months in. Oh, so true. there is that. So I don't know, but she's got Lou Fisto. Mm. <sighs> she can have Lou Fisto. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, thank you so much, everybody in the chat room. Again, please follow us on Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook. So you never know when we're going to pop up with an interview like this on uh, any other night. Yes, AIW does have Glacier this month, Billy says. <laughs> so <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so we should all go check out the Glacier show as well. Um, but uh, you know, check that out and please uh, subscribe to the show. Share the show, Indie Wrestling, on, on all the podcast places and video on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. Um, until next week, please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.